Hey folks, this is Jeff, uh, SimSamurai.net. Thanks for tuning in. This is part five of the uh, trim wheel speed brake lever and flap switch. Uh, basically, in the first four videos that hopefully you'll take a look at, I showed you how to create a dual trim wheel, a speed brake lever, and a flap switch for under fifty dollars. Or excuse me, under hundred dollars. The USB uh, board that you have to uh, plug all these into was about fifty dollars. The rest of the parts were around fifty dollars. But basically, you know, to be able to get a trim wheel, speed brakes lever, and flap switch all operating in my flight simulator for about a hundred bucks, I think is uh, probably the best you will find. And in fact, if anybody else can do it for cheaper, please let me know. Um, as you can see over here, um, this uh, excuse me, the flap switch that I got is actually off. I got off of eBay for about twenty bucks. It was actually out of a real Piper, Piper Seminole. Um, and it uses a momentary toggle. I had to gut its original components and went to Radio Shack, bought what's called a momentary spring return on, off, on uh, toggle. And the reason why I like using these above any sort of potentiometer for a flap switch is because this can accommodate all aircraft, meaning if uh, the aircraft has three flaps positions, this will do it. If it has six flaps positions, this will do it. Um, so I think this is really the best way to go for flight simulation if you like to fly a lot of different aircraft. Um, so let's start with that as you can listen. You can hear it. And that was full flaps. Let's go back up one. Back up another. And let's put the flaps all the way up. And as you can see up here, as I was toggling them, the uh, gauge that I have installed on this panel also functions according to the flap switch. So anyway, there's my flaps. We'll leave them at uh, first notch for takeoff. Um, let's review the speed brake. Uh, here it is installed into the MDF. I had to cut this little three inch slot by about uh, three sixteenths of an inch, excuse me, three eighths, three eighths of an inch wide by three inches uh, to accommodate the uh, lever which is attached to the potentiometer, as you'll see in the previous videos. And again, as you can see over here on the uh, air brake uh, gauge, it moves as well. So up is up, down is down. You also see here on my warning light that I put in, it says speed brake, so that functions properly. And lastly, the trim wheel. Um, as you can see, I have a wheel for the pilot and co-pilot. Um, when it turns, it has a couple of turns for it to you know, deflect the full trim in either direction. As you can see here, same thing for nose down trim. Takes a couple turns for it to deflect the full nose down trim. Um, so it works great. I tell you, after flying with this, it's been a real joy to have the trim wheel. Um, being a real pilot and using trim in a plane, uh, just it, it's really nice for hands off flying, really lets you uh, manage the aircraft like you would uh, when you're really flying. So I'm really glad I built this. It was well worth uh, you know, the effort, labor, and expense. Um, so that's it. Uh, as far as the cockpit I'm flying here, this is a new one that you probably haven't seen on SimSamurai.net yet. Uh, this is for my Gulfstream G4. Again, a totally custom panel that I've built. Uses uh, Reality XP gauges for the EHSI and the EADI on both sides. Uh, these little uh, MFDs that you see are Bendix King um, from SimFlyer. Um, part of the, uh, I think it's the GPX SX from SimFlyer, which includes their Bendix King stack for general aviation aircraft. Um, very, very nice uh, avionics to have as far as sim avionics. Um, what's nice about these two, a little nice uh, thing that I found is that they actually operate independently, which is cool. You can have this one ranged in or ranged out however you want it, or have it set to map or terrain mode. And then the other one uh, operates independently, so the co-pilot can operate his MFD um, in the sim independently. Great feature. Um, this FMS down here is from IGS Sim. I'm actually using the KLN94 being Bendix King GPS from SimFlyer 2 right now. Um, these are you know redundant to have both, but as I get acclimated to the Smith's FMS system, um, this will soon disappear. Uh, this is the old Concorde transponder gauge that I installed in here. Really nice because it's got the keypad so it's really quick to punch in your transponder code uh, via the keypad when you're flying on that sound. Really nice handy feature. These are the Collins radios that actually go with uh, the Reality XP EADI EHSI. Um, I've got the Reality XP WX500 weather radar. 
I've got a uh, WAS gauge uh, GPS for GPS approaches. That's really nice to have on board. Uh, Sandel 3400, which is a terrain, aware, a terrain awareness warning system and ground proximity warning system, traffic warning system, all in one gauge. Great to have. Um, autopilot, I custom built myself. Very nice feature. And anyway, this plane is just a really nice one to fly. One of my favorite ones in my collection. And now that I've got my handy trim wheel, speed bank lever, and flap switch, it's even more of a joy to fly. So thanks for tuning in, and I guess uh, you probably want to see me take off here. So I guess we'll get airborne and uh, be on our way. Thanks for tuning in, and hope you like my videos. Stay tuned to the website. I've got some more stuff coming up soon. So uh, let's make sure our speed brakes are up, flaps are set for takeoff, lights are set for takeoff, landing lights on, beacon lights on, strobe lights on, transponder is on. Here we go. Obviously, but uh, this is a quick tutorial. <laughs> and we'll put the flaps up. And so there we go. And as you can see, uh, if you can see outside the screen, I'm controlling my pitch movement right now, but I can take that over with the trim. Reduce my speed. I'm doing 210 knots now. And I can just trim the aircraft up using the trim wheel. Very nice to have. You can see that. You can see the trim. I'm now controlling the pitch of the aircraft with the trim wheel. Hopefully I don't overstress it while we're doing this because I do have all my realism uh, settings set to full realism. But anyway, you get a good idea that the trim wheel works. So if you follow along with my videos for building it, uh, hopefully this is the result that you will end up with. I'm definitely happy I made it and it's a great addition to my simulator. So that's it from SimSamurai.net. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And please stay tuned for more videos. Have a good week. And uh, remember, keep the greasy side down and have a safe flight. Bye.